What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. He's 52 years old. How you doing, Greg? Good. How was your birthday yesterday? It was one of the best birthdays I've ever had. And I want to thank everyone that uh, that helped make it that way, all the, all the great birthday wishes, and everyone that tuned in for the Signs Watch Along, which yeah. was so fun. Uh, that I think we have to do it again, honestly. Not science. We've already I was gonna say we watch something else, right? Again. Yeah, we just watch it again. No, I, I, I put it on the table. We should watch. We should just keep with the alien invasion theme. The next one we should do next week is War of the Worlds because I love that movie mm. too. Now, here's my thing: is I don't remember liking War of the Worlds. This happened because science came up in the conversation. <laughs> we had a big argument on the stream. He just got hot. He just got hot with you. I've been trying to stay quiet until the introduction, but my God, come on! It's, you know, the show goes. We'll get to your introduction in a second. What is War of the Worlds? By the Tom end. Cruise, the best thing ever? No, come on. I mean, what is he? No, he's got a dumbass kid. He's got to drive him around in a car. They go inside the thing. I remember this movie. No, but I don't remember being impressed. My my reason I, I want to watch it is because there's a moment in Signs where they go down to the basement and have to be real quiet and like the thing yeah. starts banging on the door and then there's there's i just like those moments in movies and i remember war of the worlds doing that really really well with uh dakota fanning i want to say fanning, yeah mm-hmm. with the, uh, the tentacles are like coming around trying to search for it. and they're like Shh. and then there's that one crazy guy with the rifle who's like i'm gonna kill everyone You're like what's I don't happening remember that. i don't remember andy well. from kind of funny <laughs> well, uh, hey, excuse gonna- me nick it's my show andy from kind of funny thank you greg thank you um one thing i was going <laughs> to mention is i want to watch it because the son in that movie is I, I, you know, obviously he's done a lot of great things in his career. I want to see where it all started because we know him best as Goku in the Dragon Ball movie, where oh. he put on an Oscar winning performance, Oscar award winning performance. Sure. And I want to see what were, what are the sort of like, uh, you know, where did his career start off in, you know, before that's the evolution. I'm, yeah, before, before the evolution, <laughs> before. yeah, before the revolution was. <laughs> yeah, I want to that. That's a joke, Greg, because it's a bad movie. Dragon Ball's a bad movie. And the, guy plays the, kid, Goku. the kid from War of the Worlds is Goku? Yeah. Very strange. Very strange. You don't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. I was like, <laughs> when, I, when I saw the previews, I was like, they couldn't have. There wasn't one guy. <laughs> no one? No one. Like, You're really? Your Goku. Not. Okay. Okay. Right. I mean, do you? Do you? If you're gonna, if you're gonna watch it, at least give it to me straight first. Like, give me, give me at least one before you flip it on its head. Jeez. Name him Gary or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to just give me a movie in the Dragon Ball universe, yeah, this is his friend Gary, and it's pre Goku coming to Earth. All right. Uh, I know we're in the middle of the introduction and everything else. The Lou in the live chat says, Greg, your house is haunted. And I do have to say, Kevin, what the fuck is this? Why is this happening? Oh, we're live. Oh, You're, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, right uh, you, you know what? Yeah, that spot is keyed it out. It looks like my Joe, heartbeat. It looks like I'm can throbbing can you over me, there. Can you let me explain? Ooh. Come on. All right, fuck it. I what? So, Did I talk anymore? You wanted to explain? Explain. You have the floor, <laughs> Kevin Coelho. I'm the ones and twos. Joe was having an issue with her computer where the screen kept flashing green. I thought it'd be funny to key it out. So it, instead of flashing green, uh, Nick... Uh, taking his uh, robe off would come up, and yeah. it was fucking hilarious. I, I'm the king I of still, comedy. I still stand, I stand, I stand by that. I stand by that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I saw the subreddit thread about it. They, yeah, they yeah, that's good stuff. There, I turn the key off. Yeah. So next time yeah. we do a show, I can turn okay, it back good. on. Hopefully, I fix the camera. Thanks, Kevin. Right, love y'all. We love you too. We'll talk to you in a second. Mm-hmm. Of course, you already heard him talk a little bit about yeah. it. He's the Hispanic heartthrob Texas treat. Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. The globe trotting, head shotting, nitro rifle from twitch.tv. Andy Cortez. A very special day. I was sent a very special package yesterday. And by the way, earlier when you said, Nick, he's 52 years old, I was going to be like, happy birthday, Nick. <laughs> like it was yesterday. <laughs> we did plenty of celebrating yesterday. I don't know why I thought yes. Today, but I got a special package in the mail from Mountain oh, Dew, Andy, and they sent me it? their brand new flavor, Major Melon, and it is now a permanent addition to the flavor offerings. In addition to Code Red, the standard, and the other shit. Um, oh, Ooh. they said you want two, Greg? They did, buddy. Ooh. They did. Are we gonna okay. drink it together? No, I gave mine away oh. immediately. Sorry, I don't. You know, I'm not a big soda guy. So, like, Allie was coming over, and she was giving us a pot pie, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, later on. Ooh. And then uh, Jen was like, I'm going to give her some lemons. And I was like, I'll give her this Mountain Dew, too. You're a piece of shit, dude. What do you You're want me to do? Kind man. Give it to Andy. Do the do. Right? Kind man. 
if they'd bring back orange live wire, I'd be all about it, but I don't want to drink this yeah. major melon. How do you think that this is going to get popular enough to be a forever flavor? You know, people yeah. got to have it. They got to taste. They got to talk about it. So Greg's yeah. doing what he can to spread the wealth. You know, it does exactly, seem like right? a hasty decision, Andy. Why, why even, would they do that? I mean, I didn't even know he would have po- like, here's the thing. Austin, you're talking about spreading the word. He didn't even post about it on social. He's got Andy, his picture. He's got a, I am? Yeah, you know? that guy, that picture is clearly a, a social post for later. Yeah, but also Andy, Greg doesn't. Greg's not the kind of person on Instagram to just post anything, right? He's not I, just going to yeah, go there and post his shoes or him walking or his somebody hat or his Somebody sends leggings. me some random free thing. It doesn't mean I'm automatically going to post about it. All right. God, he's That's not. So he's not a hack like all the he, rest he, of he's us. He's got. Out. He's got scruples when it comes to he's his holding Instagram out. followers. Okay. I'm, I'm not, playing hard to get. Send me that as well, Greg. <laughs> yeah. GSI if you're, is if body you're an audio listener, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the life size mountain or life size for a person mountain dew body pillow. I want and that. Like, like, my my fiance is not Nick's wife, and what by that I mean <laughs> she is not the type that if something comes in, she's like, no, that thing's fucking leaving. Until this showed up in my house, <laughs> yeah. she's like, no, why did they send this? And she was like mad at me. I'm like, I didn't ask for that. I didn't mm-hmm. order this. Like, mm-hmm. it's yeah. here. I don't know what to do with it. And of course, the that thing was is, cool, cool Greg's room. He's holding. Well, it here's down, the, here's the thing about it is when the Mountain Dew body pillow entered my life, obviously. Mm-hmm. My wife, in between, you know, I would say uh, D and Gia. She's not as extreme as D, but I do get a lot of eye rolls when I bring in the random mm-hmm. things I did. Uh, her and Lucy James, not big fans of the Mountain Dew, do the Dew pillow here. But the first time they cuddle up to it on the couch, they're like, "Fuck, this actually feels pretty good." And now it's it a staple. Now it's yep. a staple of the house. People, Pulls people sleep on body pillows, literally and figuratively. Uh, they're they're great. They're fantastic. See the the thing with me is, and, and this is why I appreciate my wife, right? Because she has my she wife. operates my wife. <laughs> She operates off of a uh, a degree of constant vigilance when it comes to this household that is just impressive. Like, I'm not going to lie, guys. One out of every seven days, I barely make the cut of being allowed back into my house <laughs> because I'm dirty or something. She's like, nope, go hose yourself off. We've been playing in the park. Get out there. If that pillow came near anywhere near my zip code, she would nuke it in a second. There's just no way. <laughs> nuke it. I will say, like, I, I, I shout out to Mountain Dew for attempting to be cool or whatever. Like, they sent Andy the new flavor. That's okay, great. there's I no attempting. They're cool. Mountain Dew's I would cool. have appreciated the new flavor. Instead, I get a body pillow and a giant box that had one bottle of Mountain Dew. And it yeah. wasn't even a 20 ounce. It was, like, a weird yeah. size bottle that I've never – like, some European shit. I'm like, this yeah. is, like, a, a bizarre choice for them. Similar to when they in the holidays they sold they sent us the or I guess for Thanksgiving they sent yeah. us the Mountain Dew cookbook, cookbook and like a like a Mountain Dew apron <laughs> and all this stuff and I'm like I, again I know I sound very ungrateful right now and that's because I am it's because yeah. I am I don't know that I need this shit. we we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have Tim you we wouldn't have any of these gifts if it weren't on the seminal episode of KFAF where me and Nick ranked the dues mm-hmm. and because of that that's out of this beautiful partnership and which is I'm why it's even funnier grateful. that nick gets none of it you know what i mean like <laughs> nick doesn't even get to think he might possibly <laughs> watch <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah andy and i have an unspoken agreement that andy gets all the stuff and that if i want any of it i don't get any of it yeah so it that's yeah that's our agreement unspoken. Mm-hmm. yeah it's unspoken <laughs> He's four of 30 under 30, a.k.a. <laughs> the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the verified one at Tim Gettys. Let's him host. I never knew, having not seen either of these movies, I never realized that War of the Worlds and The Day After Tomorrow are different movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But according oh, to Wikipedia, they are. Are, oh, yeah. so is, are you telling me one mm-hmm. of them is actually good? Yes. I th- well, first off, how dare you? Yes. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Pump the brakes right there. Man, because we've been friends for a long time, but this could end it. <laughs> This is War the, the Worlds. And first off, the day after tomorrow, I would put on the great category. That great. Really is That's not even on such... the Nick Scarpino like scale. I'm making what, a new what scale. Are the, no. What are the normal it three finger scale? Mm, three finger scale. Good, 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 bad, good, and bad, bad. This is at the top of. No, nah, I'm sorry. Great. You know what? I can't even. Lie. I can't even. This yeah. it's, it's dead category. center. It's dead yeah, center. Good, bad. That movie pinky. is a guilty pleasure. That's guilty am, pleasure movie. Right. I there. will not allow the Nick Scarpino three finger scale to be sort of to evolve into a new form because of the day after tomorrow like that's <laughs> i'm not letting that be the one that causes a change I just, here. i'm such a sucker for bad disaster movies guys like but the thing is when the snow comes in, what's that 
it's not bad. No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's enjoyable. It's like it's 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 a it's a fun comfort food movie, right? You throw it. It's a Sunday afternoon, day after tomorrow's on, and you're like Dennis Quaid. Why do you have to traverse the entire United States with snowshoes to save your son? Just I don't know. There's got to be a better way to do this. And the answer did you watch the movie? There wasn't a better way to do it. Everything was freezing in like two seconds. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry, Greg. Sounds like you've watched this movie a lot and you really like it. Why don't you come to my defense? You I was coward. trying to come off the bench a little bit ago and everybody <laughs> was just shouting over me. All right. I Here's the thing. I won't lie to you. I had forgotten that movie called The Day After Tomorrow. <laughs> but once I saw the poster, <laughs> I was like, oh, I distinctly remember this one. Remember the, in the little fucking, the, that uh, annoying guy in the library is like, we can't burn the Bible. I'd be like, listen, man, mm, there's burn. other libraries that people aren't trying to stay alive in right yes, now. Yeah. We're going to burn everything in this fucking Fine. fight. Also, people have it online, bro. It's not like we, you know what I mean? It's like you don't, you don't have to, yeah, burn anything to stay alive. That movie in this great. in this movie situation, I feel like you guys were leaning towards you know alien stuff with signs. Is there any mm-hmm. uh, possibility of watching uh, what is it, the fourth kind? Or- oh. The fourth kind with the owls. Is that the owls one? Yeah, because that is so. So it's like so, Nick. It is like Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. That's why it's called that. You know, like it's kind of a play on that. This movie, Austin, terrified me. Like, mm-hmm. it traumatized yep. me. Yep. And the the it's the, these kids are asleep, and they would hear these owls oh, outside. Oh, this looks terrifying. And they would be like, "What are these owls doing here?" And I don't even know what the whole point of the movie was. I so, was just so terrified. Essentially, oh, was, so they're they're up in like Jolovich, yeah, they're really. up in like what uh, is it Alaska? I think somewhere in Alaska, uh, and like it's a high concentration yes. for alien abduction no, there. Yeah. So like the whole thing is like it's not highly populated. So the aliens are like, oh, whatever, we can take people from here. And that's like actual like real data of people who say they've been abducted by aliens. It's like that's a hot spot. And so um, it's to the point where this uh, psychologist is talking to so many different people about them beginning them getting abducted. And they all kind of have a similar story about seeing this owl and then being abducted and they explain it. But the cool thing is it gets kind of modeled um, after like uh, similar quote unquote true events. So they've oh, got they have, like footage that they put next to the, the movie that is the same conversation. And it's the scary. actors in the movie are dramatizing it. And mm-hmm. so you get to see both and it is, it makes it so oh. intense. I'm in, yeah. I Ricky love says it. It's a, a pseudo documentary purporting yeah. to be based on real events. That's pretty, yeah. pretty cool. Dude, yeah. When it's, you, it's when really, you see it, Austin, I forgot about that. How That's, they interweave the real life interviews yeah. with the draw. Oh my god, it's even Cause, freakier. Because there's parts when they're trying to essentially communicate, and you, there's recorded phone calls apparently of like they, you hear the actor saying it, and then you hear like underneath it is like this. Hey, what was your name? Like, like people were actually doing this, oh, and it's like terrifying. It's too much. I'm like, I. That I'm totally in. I would totally watch that. But now that makes me also want to watch a double feature of that and Fire in the Sky. Oh, no. Because if we can make you no. watch Fire in the Sky, Dude, I think Alec that's great so content. Strong. He was so strong. He didn't look that good. <laughs> <laughs> what a strong boy. He's so strong. Who Fire made in the Sky. Strong? No way, dude. I mean, just the abduction of that. The That's the thing that I've mentioned several times. When Tim was going through his LASIK procedures, I just kept imagining dude. the Fire in the Sky dude. moments where they're holding open their eyelids and they're going to drill and do some crazy ass shit. And they're in like uh, sort of like a, I don't know, a womb like thing and there's the all this like liquid and oh yeah the vacuum yeah, oh the god thing. it's just awful dude awful awful movie and then like don't a couple of astronauts make appearances but it's like actors playing the astronauts because they went I to go say I mean, I hey, it's like a real astronaut I doubt it's them. Yeah, I would doubt it's the real. Oh, like, yeah, fuck like, it. I'll come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need me to say? I'll say I saw an alien. Sure. I'm yeah, I'm back. I'm back from the moon. It's cool. I'll yeah, have exactly. to look it up. But yeah, one of those movies that you you know my dad recorded on VHS because it was playing at two a.m. on HBO and just a good ass movie. Dude. Good ass movie. <laughs> Awful. In rounding got... out our oh, five sorry. person group, he's the first ever guest on the new kind of funny oh, podcast, second episode full of guests, whatever you want to call it. He's WWE superstar, Xavier Woods. Up, yeah. up, down, downs, Austin Creed, the commish. Uh, Hello, Austin. My muscles. Also, check out this new shirt, quarters only. You can get it at uudshop.com. Just dropped today. Look at the back. Boom. I'm going to yeah, buy that shirt right go, now, baby. dude. That's dope. It looks good. Wait, uudd.com slash shop? uudshop.com. Oh. There's also a bunch of left, right, left, right merch up there. That's really hot. <laughs> there is. And the left, right, left, right title just went on sale today. It's whatever. If you want to get that, you can, if you're into it, whatever. But this new shirt up, up, down, yeah. down. Woo! Oh, baby, it's clean. 
But the left, right, left, right stuff's really cool. I mean, it's Jesus, okay. This guy, he's annoying. It's all right. I'm not <laughs> annoying. I'm just calling a spade a spade. You know what I mean? I mean, all I got right down the middle. Some commissioner should do that. Some would say, but it's not whatever a- you decide to spend your money on, I'm happy that you're happy because it all comes <laughs> to daddy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been, sir? We haven't seen you in a while. I've been all right. I've been all right. Um, yeah. I'm glad that it's 2021, and I'm just yeah. uh, hoping that we shake some of the stink off. But um, from a video game standpoint. I, this is going to be a controversial thing, but for me, I've been thinking about it, been talking about it. I think I got to have some more conversations, but I think that 2020 may have been my favorite year in video game history. Whoa, for, like, wow. for like releases of things, I found so many. I was doing my top 10 list and I and I actually played through like so many games that to me could have been like game of the year at any time. Like I just I'm, I'm late to it, but I started playing Hyrule Warriors, the second sure. one that sure. dropped. And I'm a, I'm a sucker for Dynasty Warrior games, and then when you put Dynasty Warriors oh, like with Breath of the Wild mechanics on it, oh, oh, and this and it's gorgeous. The music is great. The stages make sense. The items are fun. Like, and there's too many of those. There's so many of those. So I don't know. 2020 was a banger year for video games. I do oh wonder how it's gonna hold up when we're looking back at it. The way that we look back at like a you know the 2007s of the world, 2013, 2017, 2013. Like, there's these years that stand out. I wonder. I think 2020 will be in that conversation for sure. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if we're going to to look at it as a year like d- did it have the God of War level masterpiece that I think we're going to remember those years for? Because the last of so. us part two, obviously, a lot of us love that game, but mm-hmm. it being a sequel, it, it being whatever, God of War obviously is a sequel, but it's different. You know, mm-hmm. I just I wonder in 2025 what we think about this. I think that yeah. people will be saying Ghost of Tsushima was that game. Really? Wow. That's the one we're gonna look back at from it. I think so because I think once I think a lot of people played the single player and kind of were done with it. But when you go back and play the multiplayer as well, like that's that's worth the cost of the game to me. The multiplayer is insane. The co-op capabilities of being able to run missions together and then being able to essentially do raids and horde mode as different kinds of classes of samurai. Like sure. you, there's there's so many hours in it and it's so replayable. And just that 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 whole game, that whole story, the way it looks, like everything about it is super innovative. Like I think I think that's gonna be a game that people look back at and go, holy shit, we got this in 2020. I think that's how they're going to see it. I hope so. I don't know. I feel like I've, I think, yeah, with Last of Us Part Two, Animal Crossing, Final Fantasy VII Remake, all amazing games, obviously. But I think it falls into the thing, yeah, that Tim's talking about, where it's like, okay, those are IDs, IPs we've seen before, right? Mm-hmm. So when you look back at that, does that stand out as brightly as a, a year where there are all these different... And I guess even when I'm... As I'm saying it, right, I'm thinking of 2018. I'm thinking of God of War. I'm thinking... I mean, God of War, but... Uh, it's an interesting question how, how we're going to look back. Andy, yeah, it's, wild. it's wild because I think of like the games that I thought were, you know, 10 out of 10 game of the year types that could go up against any other game of the years. And still the game I played the most this year was Warzone. And I just, I think that's yeah. just such a top down, like one of the best battle royales I've ever played. And then I think of how much fun Fall Guys was. And I always mm-hmm. wonder about like in, a, in an alternate universe, what if Among Us and Fall Guys had swapped places? Would uh, would Fall Guys be talked about more because obviously Among Us came at the end of the year and mm-hmm. kind of, you know, was the fever pitch and that's all everybody was talking about. But I think if those roles were reversed and, you know, we're talking about game of the year type stuff, I think we see Fall Guys talked about a lot more because it kind of came and went at the beginning of quarantine and a lot of people fell off of it or whatever. But man, it was hot for that like three week, four week stretch uh, of time during that what summer was it summer i don't even know when that summer yeah yeah i I always wonder about that like it just in terms of release times you know how that changes the discussion you know what's crazy about the discussion that we're having right here is like we're talking about video games and like looking back on 2020 as like i undeniably will be in the conversation of best year in video game history then you look at movies and it's just like no (laughs) like like it is gonna be a year that time forgot right like it's it's nuts that the the handful of movies like even on the indie scene like even in the artsy spaces like they just weren't weren't, there wasn't a, a, a level of quantity to even be able to have the conversation about the quality it's like We're literally talking about Bad Boys for Life, Sonic the Hedgehog, (laughs) Tenet, Wonder Woman as the big blockbusters, Mm -hmm. right? But then you kind of have a pretty steep fall down to like Trolls World Tour, (laughs) like immediately. I'll tell you what, though, TV wise. Oh, insane. Hit. TV Killer. was great. Like we yeah. and we started off the, the the quarantine essentially with Tim recommending me to watch Dave, 
And yeah. season Incredible one show. of Dave immediately became, I think, one of the more like hilarious at first, then just straight up artful shows. Uh, Greg from kind of funny. Now, Dave, a great movie. How did they stretch that out into a season of TV? <laughs> God, right. Does he just say, like, does, he pretend, he gonna... does he pretend to be the president the whole time? <laughs> the worst. Worst. He has some trouble with uh, Sigourney Weaver, their relationships on the rocks a little bit here and there. <laughs> Uh, like, let's again, let's Dave, let's a great not. show, but then also another show that kind of got uh, that just sort of came and went really quickly. And this was. I think we started talking about it on screencast before we all went work from home, and I think I mentioned it a couple of times and then the season eventually ended at the beginning of quarantine uh, devs on FX was mm. one of my absolute favorites last year. It is um, Alex Garland, who did um, Ex Machina. Uh, Ex Machina and Annihilation, uh, super high sci-fi concepts, and it is uh, what Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec, who's playing a sort of, you know, Steve Jobs-ish character, very visionary in the tech world, and it's just, it's such a, it's such a good uh, story and just riveting sort of moments. Man, your heart is going to be pounding. Like I, I highly recommend everybody go watch Devs. It's so goddamn good. And our Alex Garland, I love that FX was basically like, hey, Alex, do something like fucking wild. Like, mm -hmm. do all the movie stuff. All, any ideas that have ended up, ended up on the cutting room floor, do an eight episode run and just make a season <laughs> of a show. That's like a one off, obviously. And that's, that's another great thing about shows being one off. So, you know, you don't have to be super invested and worry about falling behind. It's a one off series. It's super damn good. Devs on FX. Very, very good. Queen's Gambit, same thing. Mm. Yeah. I, I, love I love that it was a, a one-off, you know, just like we don't mm -hmm. need to worry about sequels and shit. It's just tell a good story, have a good ending. Knock yeah. it out of the park. It's, I feel like Queen's Gambit is, is a show that someone created and they didn't have like a shell for it. And they're like, uh, I got this great show and I need an idea for like a conduit for it. They're like, well, I bet that this show, I bet if you think your show's so good, I'm going to give you a weird one that I don't think anybody would watch. A random, like, orphan girl playing chess. Like, make that interesting. And they go, yeah, totally. It's one of the most interesting things you're ever going to see in your life. Here. Yeah. Weirdly, weirdly, I listened to an interview with the guy that that actually got the show, like the showrunner. Um, and he was saying that that they've tried to, that series slash movie was in development for a really long time. And apparently was uh, slated to be Heath Ledger's directorial debut before he really? unfortunately passed away. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it's a book that was written, I think I want to say, and Kev can help me out with this, maybe the eighties or seventies. Really? And one of the hard things was what, that the guy talked about, which I thought was fascinating. I think this was on uh, fresh air. If you guys want to listen to it, I was on uh, Terry gross. Um, he talked about how he was like, we didn't, he was like, I didn't want to do a movie because if you boiled all that down into a movie, it would have had to be a sports movie. And he goes, I didn't want to be a sports movie. I wanted it to be more of her inner, her inner struggle. It is. But if it was, imagine all of that, the, her, you know, it would, it would have just followed that traditional sports, like, you know, two hour long. She wins. She like, she's discovered. She wins, she wins, she wins, she wins. She loses. She hits the lowest part. And then she comes back up and figures out what she needs to do to win. And while that did happen, I think you would have lost a lot of that inner struggle and that turmoil with addiction and her facing her demons and really having to overcome that. So I think it just worked out a lot better. Um, and it also challenged them a little bit more to try to figure out how to make chess riveting over the course of like eight hours, which they somehow did. They somehow made me who I don't mean, I've played maybe. I was that kid that had the chess board. I was like, let's play chess. And then I would lose interest in it five moves in because I'm like, I don't know how any of this shit is. But I was riveted by that. And I think everyone that worked on it was just knocked it out of the park. Having said all that. Were you riveted by the chess part of it though? Like, I like yes, don't get me wrong, yes. her skill and her learning and watching on the ceiling and all that stuff, all that was awesome. But it also made me look at chess as I already think of like, what a boring game i gotta memorize all these things nobody's coming it's nobody's not, it's out not. there composing at the keyboard you know what no, I mean? yeah, no adventures let me tell you that when i see <laughs> when i see a nitro rifle out there right and i see what? him in the war zone right he's not going heads. oh i need i need to go in here and i need to do the sullivan pass and then i need to do the loop-de-loo and the lindy hop to get over you know what i mean he's like no well, i'm gonna get well, out there i'm just gonna make it happen i think they did a really good job of explaining chess in a way that i had never looked at before right which is that there's a ton of different strategies that you can study to apply to the game which i know to any chess is probably like yeah no shit nick that's like it's that's what how you that's would how do you any, play any play. That's how, well i mean that's how you play any game right like that's how you play football you have plays you study those plays you do you go run those plays you rehearse them but i never thought of chess in terms of that um, until this show, I was like, oh, the, people have written theory on like just straight up move sets that you can study. And to me, that clicked finally where I'm like, oh, 
I understand this now. It's not just something that like super genius is. I mean, I'm sure in order to excel at a high level, you have to be really, really fucking smart. But to me, it, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I, I understand it now. There's a foundation you can lay and then you can build upon that. And I think the show did a really good job of showing me that. And that made me really invested in her winning at the end. And, you know, sure. and I think also to to um, to give them credit. Also, one of the things that I really liked was it was a show uh, during the Cold War that didn't paint the Russians as the end all be all worst people mm-hmm. on the planet. Um, and I think that I, I heard that the, the showrunner talk about that, too, where he was like, you know, it actually was pretty popular in Russia because for the first time, like they weren't the bad guy. They were just the antagonist. And I think sure. that really does well because you get to know them. You get to know the bad guy, one of the bad guy, the antagonist, on a much deeper level, and you see his struggle, and you see like what he goes through to get to maintain his top position. It just all really worked really well for me. I think it's great. Yeah. Big if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of funny <laughs> podcast. Each and every week, four, sometimes five, best friends gather on these microphones, coming to bullshit is about whatever they want to bullshit about, and we all have a good time, and we all hang out together and have a blast. If you like that, you can go to patreoncom slash funny where of course you can kick us a few bucks, and you can ask your t- questions on the show. You can get the show ad free. You can get it with the exclusive post show. We only do on patreoncom slash funny However, if you have no bucks to toss, our- oh, you could be watching live too, but like DJ Kento is, Cameron Kennedy is, uh, Demi. Demetrius Newell's mark is. Uh, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com, and podcast services around the globe each and every week, twice a week now, uh, to see what's going on and hang out with us. I'm so sorry. Nick, you have a question. Your hands up. Having said all that, it's no Cobra Kai. Oh, that is very true. Very fucking true. Uh, I, still haven't, I still haven't started it. Austin. Oh, I know. Oh. Everybody keeps telling me I'm st- I'm stuck in a show right now that I can't stop watching, and I, I have to finish it before I watch Cobra That's Kai. Fine. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. So you so haven't even seen show. season one? No, no, no. I haven't watched any of it. Oh, oh baby, I, this is going to so, be good. So if I have the opportunity to. So like when I first heard about Cobra Kai, I heard about it, and not like a ton of people were talking about it around me. So I was like, you know what? I don't know if they'll get a second season, and I kind of like watching a show when I know it's done if I have the chance to. So I was like, okay, I'll give it like three months because it's I don't feel like I have to know about it right now. And then it was like, kind of went away. And then I was like, oh, there's another season. And then I feel like in this most recent season, that's when I've heard it talked about the most. I'm like, fine, okay. It's yeah. it's, it's doing it's well. It came, I gotta to, now. it came to Netflix. It was stuck on yeah. YouTube premium before, but now it's on Netflix. Everyone's talking about it for yeah. good reason. It's fantastic. It is. Yeah. Thank you, our Patreon producers. No one cares about Cobra Kai. No one cares. All right. Everyone (laughs) cares. Here's the long and short of it, everybody. I grew up with people caring about the fucking karate kid. And guess what? It was a dumb movie that was boring then, and it's boring now. All right. The best part is when they wore skeleton outfits and rode bikes. Otherwise, it was wax in a car and then lusting after Elizabeth's shoe. All right. And so I got through it. We all got through it. It went away. They tried to bring it back with Swank. And guess what? We didn't want it. They tried to bring it back with Jaden. Guess what? We didn't want it. No, we wanted it. We were done. We were fine. <laughs> we were out. And then all these old people like Nick, they had to be so old and say, let's bring everything back. Let's bring everything back. Still haven't gotten new Goonies, again. but here's a series with all the old people in it, and they're doing this thing, and they're still caring about karate. They're Great. still running around talking about karate. Wearing the, ha, ha, ha. I'll have you know, Andy, I got a voucher coupon as a kid and went to one karate class, yeah. and it was a bunch of bullshit. I bet they were like, you can't bring your bowl in here, and you fucking vomited, you little kid. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Cortez from Catapony.com. You, you could take that kid. whole monologue right there and just replace every noun with ghosts and busting. No, you couldn't. Ghost busting is a different thing, all right? I thought Andy was going to be like, you could take that whole monologue right there and shove it up your ass because you're <laughs> yeah. totally wrong. Because yeah. Karate no, Kid. I, oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I will like, though, when Greg was doing his little angry rant right there. Nick did try to pop in and go, oh, ghost, Ghostbusters. Uh. Like, like, see, here's the thing, like, Austin, Nick will, Nick loves Ghostbusters, but Love he it. will just, like, if Greg, if Greg loves it, he'll go, that'll be his ammunition. <laughs> like, if I can use, if I can use <laughs> Ghostbusters against Greg, there's a hierarchy, Austin, of, yeah. of, of things that I need in my life. One is great movies, two is nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Um, but above all of that is giving Greg shit. So if I can use mm-hmm. anything in my past, I'll doesn't burn it. Doesn't matter what he loves. Around. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. Matter. I think it's a fantastic way to live, honestly. God damn it. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. it. Shouldn't yeah. put you together. Uh, thank well, you to our Patreon producers, Kieran O'Donnell, Steve Powers, Julian the Gluten Free Gamer, uh, Alexander Knoxel, Bill I M. Today we're brought to you by youtube.com slash kind of funny plays, but I'll tell you about that later for now. I want to kick. I, I, we have three, yeah, three great questions. And 
Austin as our first guest on the okay. new and improved kind of funny guest podcast. You get to pick, all right? Okay. So it can either be about wrestling, which mm -hmm. shockingly you and I rarely ever talk about on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Even though, you know, we only talk about video games and yeah. giving each other shit usually. Yeah. Uh, it, so wrestlers, uh, the worst dinner you ever had, or Scotty doesn't know. Ooh, Scotty doesn't know. That's easy. Brandon writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny like you can and says, is there a better in movie song for a non-musical than Scotty doesn't know? Of course, we're talking about that's Euro Trip, right? Isn't it Euro Trip? Yes, that is Euro Matt, Trip. Damon. Yeah. Matt Damon. Yeah, Matt Damon. Matt Damon's cameo in Euro Trip, which is a weird one, but he's there. Great song. You know it's what I like mean? Not, not an actual song. Yeah, so a better in-movie song. So a song that exists in the movie, not something that plays over the movie. And it has to be a non-musical. Wait, okay, isn't that a so song? Can, was, mm. I will they, give them... What are you oh, saying? I'm sure they released it. I, I'm sorry. It, it's, it's released. It's a song. Like, Scotty doesn't know is a, is a song. You yes, can... yes, yes. But okay. fo follow my words one more time. Better. It's a song that exists in the movie. Like in so, the universe, those characters know that song. It's not just playing over their actions. Yes, Nick Scorpion. I'll, I'll throw out, and this is, doesn't 100% fit the criteria, but I want to give a shout out to every single time. To every single, single time the Dan band is in anything. Ooh, yes. Because yes. I have never <laughs> laughed harder at a movie. Then when they're at the wedding at the beginning of old school, I'm totally. And he's he's like, turn around every now and then. I fucking need it. And, and when he yeah. slips in the F word, yeah. and they look at I each other, laughing I for. Need you more than that's ever. What it was, <laughs> I fucking need. And I was like, did he? And and then they cut to Will Ferrell, and Will Ferrell is he has that perfect look on his face that is saying what you're thinking. Was like, he just say the, the F word? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. Funny. yeah. Yeah, the, I, the I don't term, know that we're going to find a song better than Scotty doesn't, doesn't know, know following man. these rules because it it includes an amazing Matt Damon cameo, but sure. it also is so good story wise. Like it like it, it involves characters specifically Scotty. Okay. You know? Kind of hits okay. all the points. Austin yeah. Creed from not kind of funny. <laughs> up, up, well, <laughs> well, yeah. Possibly, possibly. Give me some time. Um, <laughs> anytime, so, anytime. Oh yeah, you work at G Four now too. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a, I got a lot of irons in the fire. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> so when we say movie song, it's fine if it was released after the movie came out, but as long as the yes. people in that universe, as long as it originated on film, first time that it was heard, it works. Yes. No, it has to be in world. That's yeah, the yeah. Thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Yes. It, like characters have to have sung the song. It, it is di diegetic is the term. Okay, okay like no. so yeah. I, I have one that cannot lose. Well, I have two actually, and you cannot pick between either of them. Uh, Stand out and eye to eye, both from a goofy movie. Oh fuck, yeah, those are great. great <laughs> Fucking wow, that was really good. That was really good. Also, Dude, Andy's Scotty diabetic. God. <laughs> Wow. Jesus. Now, well, okay. <laughs> now, Austin, which one? If we had to choose one, <laughs> no, you can't. which one do we go with? There are, certain questions, there, there are certain questions that you do not ask because if you do, then you will be smited. And we just, mm. we, you can't answer that question. There's no way. Well, I will say, though, that the Goofy movie has a lot of songs in it, in it doesn't it? Mm. Like, I feel like there's yeah, too many. I feel like there's musical? too many sing, uh, songs that it's not a musical, but there's. Like in the same way that I would say Aladdin mm. isn't a, mu a musical, but there's a hell of a lot of songs in Aladdin. No, but Aladdin, Aladdin is a hundred percent a musical. The one, on, the one on Broadway. So are we saying that all like <laughs> Disney, <laughs> all, the, on Broadway. <laughs> all the Disney kid movies are technically musicals? Are we no. saying that? Yeah. No, no, not all of them. But I mean, there a lot of them are. Beauty yeah, and the Beast, what's the threshold? Aladdin, Lion King. Yeah, I mean, if you have a character it's in Hercules. a movie that breaks think, out yeah, in the I... song more than once, it's a musical. Well, <laughs> well here's okay. the no, no, no. What the, the answer is like it is the are the songs about the plot about what's happening, and are there Boom. enough of them that like that's Boom. the plot? Whereas Boom. with uh, Goofy movie, it's not the plot. It's no. those are songs that are being enjoyed on stage from a performer, with oh, rare exception. Okay. That's not musical, like the, the open road song is. Mm -hmm. There are musical moments in in a Goofy movie, but it's not a mm -hmm. musical. Eddie Cortez. I'll take one that I always think about, and it is. It's not a song created for the movie. It's a song that existed years and years. Why am I hearing myself? Wow. Yeah, I don't know. You're wow. doing like, uh, say you consider yourself the most luckiest man in the world. Wait, yeah. sorry. There you go. There we go. Sorry. That was my bad. One Nobody heard step. it. No, Kevin, do it one more time. Do it one more time. They can't hear it though. Oh, they can't. Oh, damn it. No, uh, sorry. I, I was going to go. <laughs> I can I remember. I was going to do. Um, um, well, I, remember you, I can make it so you can hear it and Nick can react to it maybe. Oh. Thank oh, you. No, that's all fine. good. I just want I just wanted to do the Phil Collins effect. It's all good. We can turn it off. Um, back to my point. We'll I always later, think Andy. about I always think about Guns N' Roses in the movie Can't Hardly Wait, 
where the nerd jumps on stage. Oh, and yeah. Take yeah, me yeah. down to the paradise. And everybody's like, oh, who's That's this loser? Use, but then he just it. gets the crowd pumping and the whole party <laughs> just gets into it. Yeah. And then, like, he's making out with girls on stage <laughs> and they're like, yeah. he's crowd surfing. <laughs> I think that's such an awesome <laughs> moment in that movie. I always think about that when they're a character singing a song. See, but if that I'll... counts, then I, we have to shout out All Star by Smash Mouth at the end of Rat Race. Where they're okay. all crowds. Oh, what a movie. <laughs> what a movie. <laughs> what a film. The, 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 uh, the chair. <laughs> wait, wait, the uh the ladies hanging off the poles in the hotel room to see who falls first. <laughs> Just betting on everything. Oh. I, I'm a bit embarrassed, not for Mr. Creed, of course. I have no respect for him. <laughs> but for the rest of you, of course, that you would have forgotten this gem. Kevin, play it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, God. bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's up nub, it huh? takes so long to get into it. It doesn't, because when you hear the beat in your headphones, really, when it's not compressed, it slaps. It's Star, it's Star Wars. It's we. Oh God. Oh, God. Oh, Come on, bro. Yep. No. Okay. Oh, you cut it at the song okay. <laughs> when he says the part. <laughs> right at the part. Yeah. This yeah, is where the gonna... empire had fallen. All right. This is a song of joy for my people, the Ewoks. All right. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> Greg, the biggest Star Wars fan, <laughs> shows that it's not necessarily going to make the number one on this list. <laughs> I, I also want to shout out something that I just retweeted on Twitter. Uh, Scott Pilgrim, the yeah. song Metric. Hello again, yeah, friend. Sheet. Like I, when that moment happened, that's the moment I was like, I, I love Brie Larson with all of my heart. I'd do anything <laughs> for her. Like, God damn, that moment's such a cool mo moment in the movie. Yeah, it's a good answer. I don't know that any of these beats Scotty doesn't know, though. Yeah. Because it's such a, really? a great plot point. It's got such a Dude, great cameo. It was, yes, it's such got a good Kristen Kirk from Smallville. Because because I know everyone probably had the same moment where you were like, God, that guy looks a lot like Matt Damon. <laughs> and they were like, Oh no, that's Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to like take this conversation too far out of from where we're at because I'm liking this. But oh, yeah, I do just want to nominate real quick uh, Matt Damon to be the ultimate cameo man. Oh yeah, Interstellar. We were talking about that right before. Uh, guys, John Leguizamo mm -hmm. was the ultimate. Like, can't what? Oh, yeah. I love no, it. Every time. About, well, look, here's the thing, though, with that, Damon. We got him literally doing Scotty Doesn't Know, which is insanely fucking cool. We got him in Deadpool for Deadpool 2 for the best cameo imaginable, <laughs> so which scary. was the, the invisible guy that for one second you see it's Matt Damon. Brad that, was Brad that was Brad Pitt. That was Brad Pitt, you idiot. Oh, fuck, <laughs> yeah, we, got him. we did get him in Interstellar well, when we didn't know he was going to be there. Yeah. And then when they saw him out, you're like, is that fucking Matt Damon? He's everywhere. Oh, did, you just role models? did you just role models him, Tim? <laughs> Dude, into the role models thing. yeah you know like, yeah damn. when he goes you white you met damon <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well matt damon matt damon was in deadpool too <laughs> oh okay wait Just was he, he, guy, he was redneck number two. <laughs> oh, that's right oh God, that's <laughs> the guy that wipes his ass like talking alan. about toilet paper no it was him and alan no. tudyk right or was yeah, alan tudyk you guys, it was, yeah John Leguizamo was Tibble in Romeo and Juliet. Come on, guys. Oh, Tibble, yeah. the guy that nasty. starts everything. He was nasty. That was, like that was, that was a full. That was, I mean, full yeah, yes, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's the right role. But those guns? We're talking about Matt Damon playing, playing Loki uh, in, what was it, Ragnarok? Ragnarok. Ragnarok. God, that yeah. was so man. No, I stand by okay. it. Matt Damon's number All right. one. I mean, Tim, the fact that, that we just revealed a Matt Damon cameo. I'm watching the toilet paper scene now yeah. on the YouTube, and I don't think I ever Dang knew it. that was him. I knew it was Alan Tudyk with him, yeah. I because like before you dropped those, I was I had uh, Channing Tatum lined up. Uh, oh my god! If we because what was his uh, his cameo in uh, End of the end World? In the End of the <laughs> World, yeah, when he's on the on the leash and just presents yeah. himself. Oh god, that's <laughs> horrible! Oh god, it's so horrible. God bless it. That was when Channing Tatum, like, the fact that we somehow managed to make a world where Channing Tatum could get that popular <laughs> and then share that joy with everyone who watched him. Because there's no <laughs> one that appreciates his success more and his position more than Channing Tatum. Yes, yes that's, and true. that's true. He, he said so much. He's like, I don't know why people like me, <laughs> but I'm just glad <laughs> to be here. And I hope I bring joy into people's lives. And I'm like, I'm with you, Channing Tatum. I'm with you. I want Channing Tatum and Keanu to do something together. Oh, shut the front door. I don't know don't what, do, but I feel like they're, they're on a similar level for me. I think of sex like, is what you mean, right? Like a and great guy. Let's get to watch. 
I mean, that yeah. wasn't where I was going. Sure. But I mean, like, would you <laughs> turn away? Would you turn away? I feel like they'd give I us all the show. <laughs> wow. I watched, I, have a, I watched I have Uncle a, Frank in, in vis- the vision from uh, Solo. Paul Bettany. Really That's good. That's the one. Really and good so memory. he's in it, and he I, – I no, this isn't a spoiler for Uncle Frank, I swear. Uh, you should watch it. It's really good, Amazon. Really? I think it might, be, it might be Amazon original. You watched it too? It's Prime. It's, it's got Prime. the girl. Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's, it's got, got the girl the, from It in it. it. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and anyway, so uh, the deal is that he's gay and closeted to his uh, southern family that's like clearly wouldn't be about it or whatever. And he has this relationship uh, with this uh, his partner. Do you remember his name? I want to say Marcus, but that doesn't sound right. I can't remember Marcos, his name, maybe? but the actor is – Amazing. He's phenomenal. phenomenal. He was phenomenal. And their sex scenes are like when they're getting all kissy kissy. I was like, all right, I like this. I like this quite a bit. You know what I mean? So who I don't know who Kevin was just talking about, but I'll tell you, if the vision wants to sleep with this, this guy again on film, I'm all about it. I'm just putting uh, that out there. Put you that don't out know who I was talking about? I mean, all right. No, I forgot the names already because I was talking Shane about Tatum the vision. And Keanu Reeves, yeah. Thank you very much. No, I will <laughs> say I, movie I, should I watch. I will echo that. Everyone should watch that movie. We watched it over the break and we watched that. And I forget the second one we watched. We didn't like as much. But that one blew me away. That's just one of those those unbelievable character studies that you're just like, it's just so sad and so just incredibly moving. And you know it's gonna be that. And you're like, oh, I'm I just you just kind of hold on for the ride. But Paul Bettany, fucking shout out to him, man. Paul Bettany, Dude. come on. Yeah, Good I was watching him. him. <laughs> I know, I can't wait, right? Tonight, tonight right? right? Is it tonight? For us. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, it'll be live for everybody on Disney Plus, whatever. Uh, <laughs> by the time you see it. Uh, but yeah, no, Paul Bettany, I, as I was watching this Uncle Frank movie, because here's the thing, I don't know about you guys, because I'm, I, 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 compare me and Andy for a second. Sure, First, we can definitely talk that's about it. how I'm taller, I'm yeah. faster in America. Not that much. There's a whole bunch of different stuff that's going on there, right? But also, like, <laughs> And Andy's very confused by that comment. <laughs> it's a faster in America. <laughs> in, America in America. It's a whole yeah, the thing. Farther, but... The farther Greg gets away from the equator line, the slower he gets, apparently. Uh, exactly. Austin, Austin, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Austin at RTX London, me and Greg had a foot race in front of the thousands of people that were there at the but event. Then some other guy ran in center. the middle of it. Because there had been a long conversation if I was faster than him. We didn't know. We didn't have the answer. We finally then, raced at RTX London and I, I cleaned his hat. Like I, just, <laughs> I destroyed his ass. Again, I'm running in my shoes that aren't any athletic shoes. You're wearing tight jeans. I'm wearing tight jeans. Who cares? We all have these impediments, Greg. But the thing is, I destroyed your ass. And then you said... Well, that's a, it's a different country. It doesn't matter. It's, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not yeah, when it comes to the London Convention Center, you're faster than me. Period. All right, that's what you want to hear. Period, you want man. that? Uh, but we're not we're not here to talk about some regional competition outside of the NCAA structure. We're talking about what would happen in a foot race here in the United States. All right. Okay, so all I'm just right, saying, yeah. until then, it's disputed. Anyways. Sure. Andy, when it comes to TV, is a lot like the rest of you, right? Whatever's on, he's going to watch. People just come up and they just pour content in the digital trough, and you all go over there like a bunch of fucking pigs. You know, <laughs> you know what I, mean? I have discriminating tastes on what I'll watch. And so when I'm going through the carousel of Amazon, seeing yeah, I have a delicious meal here, Jen's made, what do I want to watch with her? And I see this Uncle Frank thing, I'm like, I really like Paul Bettany. Everything I see this man in, I enjoy quite a bit. And then it's got the girl from Aiden, and I like that. Steve Zahn's in this film as well. You start go- building a cast of characters here where you're like, you know what? I want to say this movie can't be bad. There's no way a cast like this can miss. But we've seen this before. Justice League. You think everything's going to be fine, and it's not. So you have to be, you have to sit there, and you have to be, you know, Good movie. You temper your expectations. <laughs> but I fit, I'm in there, and I'm watching Uncle Frank, and I'm just like, man, Paul Bettany, I've loved him as in Wimbledon. I loved him in uh, when he was just the voice in Iron Man, and I love him as the Vision. Now I love him as Uncle Frank. Maybe I just watch all, can we do Paul Bettany in review? What else has this man done that I don't know if it's good or bad? Deep dive on an actor or actress. No. Exactly. I mean, the Tim's world wants no. the world definitely wants to know what Paul Bettany's doing at all moments of the of like <laughs> like Paul. When we talk about the most talked about actors, we're talking uh-huh. about Paul Bettany, Greg. So I'm glad you have your finger on the pulse, man. That's what I'm here for. Right? You know what I mean? I see him on a lot of ads right now. Yeah. Hello, uh, Kevin from kindofunny.com. He has 49 credits on uh, IMDb. So, no, we can't do Ooh. that. That's, that's well, let's just start at the top. We're going to watch. I'm starting most recently. Yeah. WandaVision. We're going to see that tonight. Uncle yeah, Frank, it. banger. Everybody should watch it. I love it. Solo, a Star Wars story. Not good. But him in it, I don't really remember, period. So, who cares? He was good. He was good. Avengers, so, we saw. Yeah. We loved it. So after this, we're moving on to Stanley Tucci in review. All the Stanley oh. Tucci movies that we all love and know. Review. Yeah. And we'll have to rewatch Transformers 4 and 5. Oh. Remember where Stanley Tucci played two very different characters, including yeah. Merlin. Mm-hmm. He played Naturally. Merlin. Of course. 
Yeah. You mm-hmm. Throw sense. me off a skyscraper. I never want to watch those movies ever again. Good <laughs> Lord. That is the lowest point we've ever had in in review. Whenever we That's talk right. about how bad the these X-Men movies or these whatever movies is, the thing is with the Transformers movies are four and five. They are so atrociously bad and they are five minutes shy of being three hours long. Like they are the <laughs> longest movies of all time, dude. That's it's the worst like, part about them. It's like Michael Bay hates you. It's yeah. like he hates you. And he was hate making those movies to can we, punish can, the audience for watching them. Can we tack on like 20 minutes in this scene? Like, yeah, sure. Of course we can. Michael Bay. Of course we can. It, it's just awful, dude. Those movies are absolutely the worst. And I'm glad we did that. I don't know if it was a post show thing or if it was a in show thing for kind of funny podcast, but we ranked the worst of all of the movies that we've done an in review. And I'm glad that those landed near the bottom. Go ahead, Greg. Funny. I have a question for the panel here because I'm, you know, building what I like to call the ultimate Paul Bettany watch list. I'm here <laughs> and I'm seeing an independent film I don't, I've heard of, but I don't know much about called A Knight's Tale. Is that oh, worth ooh. my time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, bro. Really yes, it is. And I think he's really Joker good in it. He's really good in it. The Joker's yeah. in it? He that's another so- one of those movies that's like fun stylistically because it was kind of taking um, – I think it was kind of taking a little bit of a page out of Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet because it combines okay. Okay. sort of that old school knights of the – you know, or just I guess knights in general with modern day contemporary music. And correct me if I'm remembering this wrong, Tim, but I think that's what it was, right? Where like, that it was like right. modern it was songs that and stuff or, they were dancing it, to. It is – yeah, yeah but they were knights. It is a medieval movie, and it has, like, metal music, like, hard rock yeah, music yeah. in it. Um, it was fun. And it had uh, Shannon Sossaman in it, who I remember thinking, like, I really liked her performance in that. And she did the movie prior to that, which was called Go, I want to say, with James Vanderbeek and Scott Oh, Wolf. was that the one? Oh, I just watched Go not too long ago. Yeah, Katie Holmes is in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think Shannon Sossaman is in that. Um, she plays one of the, I think, one of the college kids. But yeah, I remember seeing her in that and being like, all right. And then she did Night's Tale. I was like, I'm in. Heath Ledger, I'm was, in. Let's go. Was Go when Britney Spears released Crazy? Was that for, for Go? No, Crazy, uh, I don't think he's in that. No, Crazy was in the, the movie with Clarissa from Clarissa Explains It All. Okay. Was that called Crazy? Oh, no, no, it was called Drive Me Crazy. Okay. okay. The name okay. of the movie. Never mind. Just Damn, me. I kind of forget there was a point in time where Melissa Joan Hart was nearly that actor of being, you know, sort of the... Uh, a Sarah Michelle Geller type actor, you know, where mm. she was going to be the young, hot yeah. uh, female star in, in movies and then it just never really took off. Yeah, Dude, she never really quite got to Sarah Michelle Geller levels, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm well, thinking Jennifer really cool Love Hewitt, a, you know. There's a documentary that I just watched last night called The Orange Years. It's about mm-hmm. Nickelodeon's uh, inception oh. all the way through uh, the closing of uh, the oh. Nickelodeon Studios in, in Orlando. That's cool. And it was really cool. It was pretty yeah, long. I, it was like, I want to say it was like an hour, 45 minutes or something. Uh, but the reason it was so long is like they really let every moment kind of like exist. And they showed a lot of footage from old shows to like get point, points across. And they went uh, chronologically in order from 1979 where it was like children's networks did not exist. We were the first ones to do it. And then you see their the first couple of years trying to figure it all out. The Them deciding on orange as their, their color and why they did all that. And, Green uh, slime. The, in the green slime and like all of the the ethos of it all and it's actually like really interesting stuff that it, that doesn't seem as simple as like oh there's a market that we're not making money off we can make money mm-hmm. off of it now it kind of felt like at least it didn't start there obviously it was a little more earnest yeah and uh you see all the original people and i was really shocked to see that like it was without spoiling too much about this because i think you guys should go watch it uh they have so many cast members from all your favorite shows that that show up but so many of the founding members and people that made all the key decisions were uh, women in the in leadership roles. And uh, it was just cool seeing them kind of the perspective that they brought into to it all of wanting to really push diverse casts and stuff. And that's why in the 90s, you really see a lot of female led shows like Clarissa Explains It All, but then also mm. like the cast of all that and the focus mm. on, uh, you know, TLC and Coolio and how Lori musical Beth performances Denberg. and it was just like it's cool stuff but definitely recommend it and it Do is they, kind um, of sad where they, they just talk about closing down the studio that i dreamt of going to when i was young but real quick i do want to say austin a lot of uh not enough focus on nick arcade but there was a, a good section on it yeah i've i've heard they didn't really give a ton of of back uh backstory on nick arcade but i did have a friend i don't want to cut andy off because Andy. Has no, go, ahead, to go ahead go so, ahead go ahead go uh, ahead 
one of my friends had access to like the Nickelodeon like area of Universal. And um, they said they got to go in there once, which is like very hard to do apparently. And everything, it's like a ghost town and there's cobwebs and there's stuff on people's desks. Because oh, wow. like when they closed down, they just kind of didn't get used for anything. And then it was just abandoned. And they never like, or at that point in time, they hadn't like reappropriated it for anything else. And I always thought like, man, I would love to just go in there. Because she said like she saw pieces of the aggro crag. She saw <sighs> like like whatever stuff for, um, what's the show? You can't do that on TV. Just like props. You can't do that on television. It's like, yeah. it's like oh. God, the things that I would I would love to just see. I just yeah, want to see I, a piece of the aggro crag. I would die. I had, a friend in college, I had a friend in college who had gone to, I don't even remember what it was anymore, visit his friend or his brother or some shit like that. And they lived in a house with a guy who had been on guts and had the piece of the aggro crag. And he would like take it around to house parties. And he was a god, as you can yeah. imagine. As one should yeah. be, as a champion of Earth. It, if after all this stuff, quarantine is done and Corona is done, and once we can like hug each other again, if I was at a party as a 34 year old grown man and I saw another grown man walking around with a piece of the aggro crag, I don't care what's happening. I'm stopping <laughs> what I'm doing and I'm talking to him. So like, sure. I don't think people understand it. And I don't know if there's anything in our current, current day mm -hmm. TV shows that like, kids in 20 years will like revere like a piece of the aggro crag or if someone said hey i was a contestant on double dare we would all lose our minds mm -hmm. oh my god i was I'm on the Legend of the hidden temple yeah like yeah. Yeah, is yeah. There, are there any shows like that right now that are gonna hit because i feel like when we were TikTok. watching those shows we knew they would hit TikTok. tiktok is what he says yeah i feel like that's the problem is like right now everybody's too fragmented everybody you can be in your own thing and like Will you know be like a, a, my wife and be obsessed with TikTok and know all these jokes and songs from that? But that doesn't carry over even if you're obsessed with the internet or you're obsessed with Reddit or you're on Twitter all the time. Yeah. Let you alone be, like what show you're watching. I, I turn on TV now, like YouTube TV, and usually nowadays it's just straight to the news to see what the hell is happening. Mm -hmm. But when, I'll stop on other channels and there'll be shows on. I'll be like these. And we joke around all the time about you when you, you play a video game or see a video game get announced and you watch the trailer. And it's always like, this game looks like it would be in the background of a Judd Apatow movie, right? Like, it's like, it looks good enough to be running on the back screen and not be a real game. That's what yeah. this game looks like. I see so many TVs, I would swear, are like made up GTA commercials or whatever for TVs. I'm like, this is like not a real thing. You yeah, guys should I'm, definitely I'm, watch this documentary because it goes into a lot of that stuff. And it being the first children's network, uh, it meant that all eyes were on it. And then they kind of talk about having to deal with other channels coming. They don't really go into the Disney stuff, which I wish that they did. Nick, what's up? Oh, where'd you watch it? Uh, on Amazon. I had to rent it. It's, oh, you it's rent not it? okay. free anywhere. But it, yeah, I, I just put it on my it. queue. I just want to see if I had to rent it or if I could get it free. I'll, I'll rent it. I'll definitely. I love putting money toward good documentaries. Yeah, that like, sounds interesting. Called Orange Dude. Do they talk, do they talk keep about stick Randy, stickly at all? Do they talk about stick stickly Great at all? Question. Great question. Interesting. They 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 just do for like a, a brief second. Uh, but they talked more about why Stick Stickly existed, which is the whole idea of the, the P.O. Box, New York, New York, like them doing like kind like of to live me, tours. Stick Stickly, P.O. Exactly. Box 963, mm -hmm. New York City, New York State, 10108. <laughs> like I'll ne it. like never forget that, dude. I mean, that's just like how on lock they had children's television and they knew what was catchy and they knew what was going to eventually move on and they would let those they would let go of those things quickly but man they had they had the absolute recipe of what kids were going to want to watch and get and what was sticky you know go ahead greg from kind of funny. do they talk do they talk about a uh, uh, uh wild and crazy kids mm. wild and crazy kids did not get a shout mm. out what uh, that's like that, the, that the is the show i used to watch and wild and crazy wild and crazy because they, they, they focus more on the the early uh, levels where it's like it was interesting where they're like okay phase one was uh you can't do this on television they gave the backstory on all of that and then they're like and then we moved into li live action with hey dude and that led to salute your shorts and that led to clearly explains it all that was phase mm -hmm. one and then they're like then we we knew we wanted to get an animation and none of the saturday morning cartoon people would fuck with us uh because they're like no we need to be on broadcast tv like there's no way cable is going to pay the bills for advertising and all this stuff so they're like, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. And then they came up with Rugrats, Doug, and um, uh, what was the third one? Rocco's Modern Life. Red, Red and Stimpy. Okay. Oh. And it's like they launched all those. And they're like, that was phase one of animation. And they just kept adding different phases of, what? okay, this is uh, like more of a sp like sports focused thing. This is an animation. This is live action. This is, you know, they kept growing. And then eventually when they made Nickelodeon Studios, it's because they were like, 
we now want to be this destination. So we're going to do a mall tour, get kids addicted to watching stuff, come to a place. So the Nickelodeon is not just TV. It's a lifestyle. Oh, awesome. Yeah. What's up? Did they talk at all about face? A lot of, a lot about face. Oh, so not okay. much stick sticky, like, but yeah. they talked a lot about face and how the that was the new it. era of Nick Jr. Yeah. Cause like children. So like, I, I obviously like, uh, so I work at a daycare like through like once I graduated high school and stuff. And so the kids would always be watching whatever. And, uh, my nephew or my 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 friend's friends kids and stuff yes greg did you practice move on the kids because they were easy to move around and throw no no they were too quick and they were too busy Our fighting bombs. each other i was doing a lot of pull aparts <laughs> 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 um, but face always struck me as such an interesting like character and conduit for like information for kids because just talking about like what's coming on next and like being your best friend and like face is literally just the whole tv screen and so there's that idea of like oh i don't want my kids to be babysat by tv but the same time these people were smart enough to know like it's gonna happen sometimes and here's like a solid positive way to interact with this information you're getting so i don't know who face is so greg let me give you a little context you know who Stick, you. stickly is right of course i do yeah i watch so Stick. in in the in between commercials like in between shows and stuff like you'd every once in a while pop up and kind of tell you hey this is coming up next or this is whatever yeah, yeah, right yeah. face was the same thing but face was like the face nick of jr nick jr which was like from 9 a.m to like noon Okay. Uh, it, every morning for the preschool kids. Blues so Clues. So they, they, they would make a bunch of different like little kids shows, Eureka's Castle and things like that. But then eventually Eureka's the big hit was, was Blues Clues, which yeah. they were like, we want to make a game show because everyone loves game shows. They're cheap to make. Uh, and people at home like to play along when they're watching Family Feud or Wheel of Fortune, whatever. They're like, we want to do that for preschoolers. So that's why Blues Clues is like, where's the notepad? And it's like, on the screen the little kids are like it's there it's there it's like they built that all for like the kids to be able to interact with the tv and when they wanted to come up with the mascot they had a bunch of different designs and they're like what's creepy about it is we can't like kids are scared of disembodied body parts like they don't want to just see a face that you don't see its body because it's scary to them so sure. that's why they had the idea they're like we're gonna make the tv the head of this thing so the entire screen is this thing's face so kids like aren't scared by it and it totally freaking worked. And I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, it's basically just like like two black eyes with with a big mouth and it just kind of talks to you or whatever. But what's really interesting now that I'm thinking of uh, just comparing it to other stuff in pop culture, face is pretty much the black screen with the white font for Adult Swim. Yes. You know what I mean? Like it's it's so interesting yeah. to think about how similar they are, except the, obviously that that doesn't make any sound. You just read the screen, but it has its own personality. It's snarky. It advertises shows. It talks about what's up next. They are they are the same thing, except obviously one is is meant for kids. I have a genius TV idea, by the way. Um, and I'm Hold just on, you're I'm talking think- to a TV executive from G4, so be careful. Yeah, you I have, steal I have this a, idea. Uh, I will very really much steal. I mean, I'm in a position to steal now, so yes, please continue. Okay, yeah, go ahead and steal this. Um, because I think about how in the cartoon Big Mouth, how they talk yes. to the ghost of Duke Ellington, they talk to the ghost of Prince and stuff. I would love a show where it follows a, a very much a Dave-like show, but it's Austin Creed as as the star, who's also Austin Creed, the WWE superstar as well. But you talk to the ghost of Mike O'Malley, except he's not oh. dead. But, yeah. it's, but, it's, <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, it's just the ghost of Mike O'Malley, who's like the host of Guts. And he's sort of like he sort of guides you through. And every once in a while, you're like, damn, I don't know what to do right now. And then Michael O'Malley pops up like, hey, what's up, boss? And he's just sort of a, the side character in this. And yeah, I think we greet like this for at least eight episodes. What are we thinking? I think I think if you uh, switch it from Michael O'Malley to Phil Moore, we can definitely get at least 12 or 15. Because Phil Moore is the host of Nick Arcade. What about Summer Sanders? Summer Sanders, also fantastic. Mark okay. Summers. Mo. Also fantastic. Double the there. whole Nick crew. The whole Nick Ghosty crew. Oh, my God. <laughs> they are your so force ghosts. Double there. <laughs> yeah, but it has, the show has to be somebody just got hired to be, like, the big executive, whatever, of Nickelodeon, and they're ruining it. And so then they talk to all the ghost of shows past yeah. to show them the way of what they need to be doing to bring Nick back to its former glory. Exactly. Dude, so this That's documentary has all those people we named for the most part. No Summer Sanders, but pretty much everyone else. And they get real, real. Like, yeah. uh, Mark Summers holding nothing back. He's just like, oh, yeah. he's like, yeah, man, uh, it got really extreme for me when we almost killed a kid uh, during <laughs> Double Dare. Cool. And, you know, 
didn't really know how to deal with it. I'm just this young actor trying to do my best. It's just like, it's pretty fascinating he's, stuff. He's drinking a yeah. lot of slime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to be on Double Dare, what, like yeah, two years ago, last year and a half ago or so. Um, and it's like the most surreal experience, like watching on a stage, like people like digging in the nose and stuff. Um, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to brag on myself because I don't do, do it. it a lot. Um, they asked a question having to do with like Greek mythology and I answered it instantly. And in between the questions, Mark Summers came up to me. He goes, how the hell did you know that answer? I said, I <laughs> said, I love Greek mythology. He goes, I knew wrestlers weren't stupid. loved wrestling. So I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> That's rad. Kev, I sent you, I sent assets a video if you could please bring it up because I want Greg to have some context for the Nick Jr. face. <laughs> yes, I, feel well, like, I feel like it's right up his alley. <laughs> while you pull this up, let's have a word from our sponsor. This episode of the Kind of Funny Podcast is brought to you by youtube.com slash kind of funny plays. That's right. We have yet another YouTube channel. Uh, if you didn't know, in 2021, we are streaming each and every day video games and shenanigans after Kind of Funny Games Daily. But we heard you loud and clear. Not everybody can watch on Twitch live. And of course, you can't leave a clip up on Twitch anymore because they might come at you with the copyrights and things and yell at you. So we're putting all up on youtube.com slash kind of funny plays. Please go over there, like, subscribe, share, watch the videos if you need them and you want them and that's where you get them and you do the thing if you can do it live better we already got on youtube too a copyright claim i don't know they're playing Nicki minaj or shania twain i'm not sure they played some song and it got the whole thing claimed so you got a oh, fleetwood mac that was it similar similar to Nicki minaj meets uh shania twain if i say so myself but basically what i'm saying is go subscribe youtube.com slash kind of funny plays Also, I, while this was going on, I looked up Mo from Guts. She's a voice actress. She was in Destiny Two Beyond Light. Yeah, she's doing and a whole her, bunch of stuff. her. Her, uh, she doesn't like uh, Michael Malley. Oh, go back and Why? watch Guts. They're never on. I don't know, but they're never on screen together. Not once. <laughs> yeah. Um, question. Oh, this is face. Oh yeah, that makes yeah. sense. He's the face. Okay. Um, how much longer do we go? Uh, as long as well, how, well, you got a heart out. Uh, because my thing said seven, so I told wifey seven, and it's oh, that sure. time. Okay, sure. Go bounce. Go get some tubby sure? time here. Yeah, learn about face and go. This is a, a fun podcast. We're leaving all this in. It doesn't matter. Hang out. Great show. Bro, got. Yeah, perfect. awesome. Yeah, don't worry hey, about it. We love you. I'll, I'll say bye when we come back from sponsors. No, we're, this this is it. we're back. This is all in here. Don't worry oh, about it. it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a live cut. It's a live cut. We're not going to hide what we're doing. We don't care. You got to make tubby time. I understand. I thought on the live cut, you got to add two, but you said that. It's it's There's no ads. Anyway, well, hey, everybody. Live. Um, I gotta go because the the young ones need to be bathed, and so I have to go be a father and a professional wrestler and a gamer and a soon to be kind of funny employee as well. So, and right. Thank you very we much. Gotta, we just gotta make sure that we get G four out of there. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know. Now you're a man on the inside. You take him down from the inside, and take him down. Yeah. Take him down. No, no. Okay, if if, if G four becomes a success again, I can't like we can't compete with that on you know. Yeah. Paycheck. Well, I mean, that's good. Good thing you know me then. <laughs> all right cool okay, that's right. Right. <laughs> he's gonna get us all the free g4 snacks that's the one thing yeah. kind of like, like, he's nice snacks. Snacks. maybe yeah. get him to you know buy you guys out so we can be a subsidiary or something so okay just, that's just a little yeah i'm easy if, if, i'm easy to, to one. yeah i'm all easy right. <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> thank you so much Austin. we love you <laughs> yeah, man. love you too bye <laughs> all right so here's Andy. the thing i want to see face like we're talking about but kevin do you have the technology to put face in for Austin and just loop him so that he's just there in the square? Oh, you got this. This is perfect. Oh, <laughs> Hold on. Man. One of the cameras is off. Sorry. I didn't have hi time. There. It's okay. You're doing great. Here. Is that how face talks? He would always say, hi there, face here. It seems scary. Well, that's the thing. He wasn't. He was the homie. And what was cool is these things mm. would constantly be updated. So there was like hundreds. So whenever there was a new one, it was really exciting. Like the first one they're showing here, he's frozen for some reason. You can see the little ice, but Give I'm sure one he's going to shake it off. Yep, and then no, take your time, Kev. You're doing great. Andy, you, uh, you, you stoked something in me when you were talking about the – or maybe it was Tim. One of you guys mentioned the text over screen for Adult Swim, which was just yeah. one of the most genius things people have ever done. It really is. Oh, it's is so easy. Work. As long as you have – you know, as long as you've got that the, beat, the, the sort of sense of humor it. and a cool little like lo-fi tune – Oh, yeah, so that. good. All right, ready? Just... Just wrong overlay me. Yeah. It's, it's Andy. I'm on the fly, dude. I'm on the fly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I'm I mean, just delete it from your computer. Guys, you're talking over face. I don't. I, I need to hear what he's saying. 
He's talking about your feelings and shit. Face right? just called Ghostbusters shit. I don't know why. Face, you piece of garbage. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember any of this shit. I no, you wanna, well, this, they said this was, you said this was what, 9 a.m. to noon or whatever? Uh, yeah. Nick and I were out there smoking cigarettes and pulling puss. Mm-hmm. All right. We weren't out there watching <laughs> fucking <laughs> Christ. We were, I'm glad you said it. I'm we were 13 and we weren't watching Nick Jr. anymore. No. All right. We were out there living our lives. We were looking for, we were looking for butts in all sense of the word. Oh my Just God. Better, Andy? Was was better for you? Butts back then. Yeah. Now, granted, the, like, this was the show. Well, all the Nick Jr. lineup was obviously nine to noon. For me, I feel like it was. Well, damn, you all must. It must have been hella early for you. It was probably like six in the morning for you guys. Now that I think of it. Well, no, because we had the, we had stuff in syndication as well. So I do. I remember watching a lot of Double Dare. Um, I swear to God, though, I've, I don't think I watched any of like Legends of the Hidden Temple or any of the other I, shows. Yeah, that was one of mine. That was one of mine. The few yeah, shows I, that are completely out of my realm of I was just too young and don't remember is. You can't do this on TV, as well as you can't do that on television. Yeah, that was a great oh one. yeah, and and then also Nick Arcade is like barely there in my mind. But really, it was Legends anything. of the Hidden Temple. It was what would you do? It was what, guts. What, All what, those what, are what I remember. Yeah, I mean it's 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 so funny. Like I I had no idea. I mean, obviously now I do, but growing up, I had no idea Nickelodeon was as big as all that. I didn't know they made more shows than Double Dare. I just thought it was Double Dare. That's all that. I just remember thinking like. I remember watching that show and there was, I guess there was two types of kids. There were kids that were like, I got to be on double dare. And then there was me. I'm like, that looks like a lot of effort and you get real dirty and it just doesn't look pleasurable at all, but I will delight in other people's uh, displeasure for sure. I wanted to be on double dare. Me too. Legend of the Hidden Temple more than anything, but sure. Of course. That's the one with the obstacle course that like looks like Indiana Jones, right? Maybe I did watch a lot of that. I probably I probably watched some of that because they were probably they had to be on back to back right. There was a moment where there had to be like double dare followed by Legends of the Hidden Temple, right? Legends of the Hidden Yo, Temple yeah, was really cool, Nick, because it had it had all these teams, these factions, right? And you would have the orange iguanas and the silver snakes, the blue and the, barracudas, the blue barracudas, and the there was green some, monkeys. Was that it? The green monkey, yeah. The, or is that a I movie? The, I remember. Yeah, I remember the purple statues monkeys. And stuff. Purp- right? Purple uh, monkeys. Okay. Know, it, was, it was just cool because me, you know, you'd have like it was always me and my brother, and we would always be like, "Oh, what team would we be on?" And you always had those cool, you know, it, that was back then. Mm-hmm. Slytherin and Hufflepuff and That's Gryffindor. So cool. That's that was yeah, what we had up. back then. Red Jaguar, sense. Jaguars, Blue Barracudas, Green Monkeys, Orange Iguanas, Purple Parrots, Silver Snakes. There we so go. All of those fought every episode, or was that just no, different? no, 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 no? They, they. Sh- I want to was, say it was three. I think it two. Was, like was it just two four. every time? I'm seeing four teams on some. I think, of these they, I think it narrowed oh, down. Riddle down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, we talk, we don't talk about like you know people ripping off people. Talk about Indiana Jones ripping off Legend of Hidden Temple. You know what I mean? Straight up. I don't know if that's that like the timing on that one matches up, Andy, with that theory. I think maybe Raiders came out first. No shame. No shame. Yeah, I tossed into the general chat on our Discord server the link to Melissa Joan Hart's Twitter. I want everybody to click on that and tell me if she follows you. She does. She does. Andy? Looking. She does not. Okay. She does not Tim? follow me either. And there was a day Nick? at IGN when she followed everyone except me. Yeah, that's awesome. And I was very upset get. about it. She's in the documentary. Man, I don't know. Awesome. I don't know. She also, <laughs> man, has a lucrative ad deal here on Twitter with Lunchables. I feel like we oh, should get cool, Greg. This. Crushing it. Yeah, well, I forget. I forget. I remember when that day happened, and I just remember thinking, oh, I'm going to just lord this over Tim for the rest of his life. Sure. And sure. And here we are. Here we are. Just she follows what, a lot of imagine, people. 162. Yeah, 000. she's one of, you can tell she's definitely like a little bit, you know, not people as conservative always, as it should be with the follows here people on People always on get freaked out whenever they see that I'm followed by Barack Obama. You are not followed by Barack Obama. I am, but, but, but granted, he follows six hundred thousand people. Yeah. DM him, man. Say get on the podcast. Take Dude. your shot. Help Obama me out. Podcast Obama guest. follows Finnegan and and oh, Goldfarb. No. Oh, oh well, and you're, Goldfarb, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Goldfarb, I understand. He wants to know yeah, everything about the company. Games, we gotta get Wait, Goldfarb on the show. Oh, there's two different things. We gotta get Goldfarb on the show. No way. Yeah, Sony, will never, wanna, Sony will never. Sony will never let hang out with Goldfarb. They'll never allow it. Sony will never allow it. I'll tell you what, though. I already, like, I, I don't know what the audience thought about this episode. I love this. This great. is something I am so I've I never mentioned this. I meant to talk about this on kind of funny day when Tim brought up this idea. I was just like, it just 
Tim, stop talking. I'm in, right? Stop. Shut your fucking mouth. Shut your beautiful mouth and look into my eyes. And I'm super in because some of my favorite pieces of kind of funny content have always been like the Corey Barlog episode, the Brian Intahar episode, being on the podcast with Meg Turney and Jessica Negri and Troy Baker. Like when we get to have those interactions and kind of all be one big group of just goofiness, it's it's just so fun. And I, I just love the show already. I love it. No, I love having people and I love having good times. You know what I mean? Good times, great oldies. That's what it's all about. Because I've always been, you know, very much me and Tim have talked about it, you know, several times where like, yeah, I would have loved to have had more. We have cool friends episodes, but I'm not Greg Miller. And that's you why the will, Mina, because you won't reach out to Barack Obama. That's why the <laughs> that's why the Mina Kimes episode had to be edited. And I had to edit out parts of me fumbling and awkward pauses because I'm not you an interviewer. You puked on yourself at one point. I did vomit. Yeah, yeah. I did vomit. Did you know, Don't, look yeah. vomit. <laughs> really Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Turn off your turn off your camera. Like I can still see you turn though. Off. Turn <laughs> off. I can still see you. <laughs> good show. It's a good show. Uh, Nick, uh, quick thing we haven't addressed on this kind of funny uh, podcast. Sure. How does it feel to see your face on a football jersey? It's unbelievable. And it's one of those things that I keep. Okay, great. You know that little voice in your head that says, don't jump off that cliff in Hawaii because it might lead to your demise. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, the thing Tim should listen to when he jumped in the water and they almost died. Yeah. Man, I, I see this and I just think this is a train heading toward a wall and I can't wait to see where it goes. <laughs> you can't see, you can't wait to see the first horrible crime committed in your jersey <laughs> the next assault on the capitol and someone's wearing the wild aces jersey oh, they do. I, don't, I don't think they're gonna wear the wild aces jersey hopefully hopefully i mean that would be terrible but uh, none of our fans I, would fucking do that yeah well also you know what we represent the fact that we're a, a you know bay area team i guess well i guess we're not really a bay area team right because everything's kind of out of nevada but um yeah, I don't think that I don't think the, the people that were assaulting were hella into pink and blue and purple. As their colors. <laughs> I also love that the coach who got hired uh, is calling himself Coach Ace and is dressed as Johnny Ace as the as he's got the blue oh, headband. No. He's got the pink no, uh, nah, Kanye shutter kidding. shades. Yeah, I've missed That's not a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Look it up. I forget what's his uh, name. I got it. I started up. following him. Hold on. I can get uh, his name is him. AJ Smith. He used to be a former head coordinator. Um, uh, he used to work for the XFL. Oh yeah, when did. the yeah when the XFL came back, yeah. Coach Ace, oh my God, yeah, here he is. Wait, oh, that that look, look, look. You sending it over to Kev Duck? Send that yeah. to Kevin. I want to see this. I'm so I'm so out of the loop of all of this stuff. I didn't know that that the coach had been assigned and all that stuff. Wow. Shut the front door. This is the best thing ever. This See, is here's the thing. We take Twitch title Coach underscore Ace. Here's the thing. We take Coach ad- Ace show. We take <sighs> advantage of this dude because there's, you know, th- there's so much talk about the NFL, the No Fun League, right? Yeah. We always hear about that. We're having fun in this football. We're having a great oh, time. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Here's the thing, Greg. We got to get you on Levitard show, right? Oh like, sure, we yeah. Gotta, yeah. We got we got to get some interviews going. Greg is AC is because when XFL was out, when the AFL, right? Arena Football League? No, what was the first league that came out before XFL that went under last? It was a, uh, oh God, chat, chat, chat will probably know, but there was well, a league that came out. Will know. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it was like, it was news, right? Like it no, was, I know, I, re- I vaguely remember this. Yeah, I don't. This was like a year and a half ago, maybe. Um, And then that league went under really, really fast. And then everybody's like, maybe XFL will capitalize on this and right the wrongs and stuff. And it did not. Uh, because the XFL was supposed to be this extreme football league, and they came out and were like, "Look, player safety and this and that." Obviously, player safety is important, but they came out. They <laughs> came out like no they helmets. came out even <laughs> they came out even tougher than the NFL on rules. <laughs> like it was like, "Oh shit, you're doing the opposite of what you did back in the '90s. What made you so you know exciting or whatever?" Yeah. Um, God, I, I forget. I, it's got to be AFL, I believe. AFL. It's AAF is what's going up in the, the chat. AAF. Right now. Yes, yeah, yeah, AAF. Yeah. yeah. First off, I mean, did I just to dial it back to this jersey, which I think we talked about last week. So, you wore it on something this this past week. It this is. is or I wore it on a private call with you and me and Tim. This is today's debut. That makes sense. It is spectacular. It yeah. is spectacular. I I'm love it. I'm glad this is the one that won. I'm glad. I'm glad it won. Oh, it's so good. 
I want one immediately. I will totally wear this. And the thing is this, the, the thing that I love about the vibe that we're cultivating with this is that you guys know me, right? I don't, I don't care for football that much. I don't really watch football, but it's not my sport of choice. But I am so in on whatever I can do to help make this a success because it's just fun. You know, like look yeah. at the jersey. It's fun. And if these I guys actually, it, you know, we're actually going to put on some good games, that's all the better for me. But I just have this, I mean, you know, I had this vision of all of us sitting in the in the box watching the game happen, getting hammered, and the camera cuts to me, and they're like, there's the man it's all based off of. And I just look like a spaced out old person. I don't know what's going on. Super hammered. He's walking oh, around that? like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And someone someone pulls me aside for an interview and they're and they're put they're like the, the the producer goes, no 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 you don't want to ask him again. Yeah, no, 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 we've, you know, we've learned it. We don't need another own. Joe Namath interview on our hands. Like yeah, every, he doesn't every, know what's a long reason long. There's the lines now of who you don't uh, interview when you don't interview. The jersey's hot though. That's all the jersey's great. You could care less about the football or love the football that doesn't matter the jersey's nice the jersey's hot i want one it reminds me of a a titans jersey i had yes in the early 2000s and uh i'm a big fan of those colors where so, are we at job. where are we at with the fcf where's what's going on uh, with so uh, there's a whole bunch where we're at with it well i mean so games start in february so wow. we're right around the corner from it uh you know uh four weeks of regular season then we're doing playoffs and stuff right now you can go to kind of funny.com slash fcf if you don't know it's fan control football we own a football team we announced this years ago then a pandemic happened then a bunch of other stuff and have been happening at the same time too it's finally happening uh right now players have arrived in the bubble they're in georgia right now they're in atlanta uh sequestered in hotels uh waiting for the covid time to pass so that they can go out and then ride out obviously start practicing right out throughout uh, uh february so it's gonna happen fast and furious oh when God, we get going dude. like i'm just looking at this right now i mean i didn't realize all this stuff was happening obviously and, and greg shout out to you for for taking all this on but let's go through the names of the other teams because they're <laughs> awesome too are you seeing okay. these no, I've seen it all, Nick. I'm I'm the one out there screaming at everybody. Yeah, I've seen oh it. Yeah, God, Nick, Nick they've been yeah, Nick, we have like rivals. Oh like we uh, who's our biggest rival? Who can I start? The Glacier on Boys. Right now? We hate the Glacier Boys. Yeah, the Glacier Boys, like the Glacier we Boys. Uh, are FC if you're not already following uh FCF Wild Aces on Twitter, you should be. They dunk on the Glacier Boys all the time. Because I don't know if you know this, ladies and gentlemen, since of course we're kind of funny. Like, so again, up in the the quickest thing I can give you in terms of this, right? A whole bunch where we own a football team alongside Richard Sherman, Quavo, uh, Marshawn Lynch, Mike Tyson, right? There's all these people involved that own these, so that are huge deals, right? None of them uh, exist solely on the internet and make their living having the most passionate fans in the world. So like <laughs> we are dominating everyone in terms of social interaction and on all of our accounts and all our stuff. So like what it's just a name? running joke. Of, like if you just go to uh, twitter.com slash FCF wild aces, the pin thing is how many games will the F FCF Glacier Boys win this season? And then the, the responses are zero, none, zero, or a goose egg. <laughs> and everybody just dunks on them nonstop. And every time the Glacier Boys try to step up, our, we just, the, the, our, the, the people who run the Twitter account for the Wild Aces are just like, you have no followers. Shut up. <laughs> right? We are the worst people in the world. Like, oh, honestly, no. like, like, I hope that Quavo never sees this clip right here of us. <laughs> these guys right here dunk it on him or people representing us because like this is totally the example of the nerds from fucking high school coming back yeah. 20 years later they're like no now you're big dicks look at this guy right now wearing this fucking football jersey <laughs> like all he's doing i'm the king of being an asshole on the internet <laughs> oh, god damn the right i am the king of being an oh, asshole on the internet these people don't know anything uh, there's a great chance marshawn lynch will punch me by the end of the season one if we have oh, the first I'm time we meet the only. first time we meet in person actually i think he's local bay area too the first time we meet in person i'm gonna have problems with these people yeah we greg up. is a uh, we, we are essentially and i say we but i mainly mean greg is a co-owner of the wild aces with no, no, austin kind of funny. With Austin Eckler, and Austin Eckler is a uh, an actual NFL player for the San Diego Chargers, well, the LA Chargers now, and an actually an actual good NFL player. Like this is this is serious shit. <laughs> and his picture's this big. Greg's picture's like, this big. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, Kevin, go, to, go to go to kindoffunny.com slash FCF, Kevin. It should take you just to the FCF.io homepage and that you can scroll down and see uh, all, Quavo, <laughs> Bobber, and Greg Miller, and then little Austin Eckler. <laughs> Why? This is, this, is, this is the best part. Again, I, I forget. Best. This is how weird kind of funny is, I guess, that we have so many awesome things happening, let alone the awesome content and shows we're doing in 2021 we were planning and stuff that yeah we uh, me nick tim and andy have not talked about the fcf 
since we signed the contract and you guys were like, all right, it's your thing. You're excited about it. Go do it. Like there's a ton of crazy fucking shit happening where ESPN is reporting on it. And Johnny Manziel is on the fucking zappers and like the franchise tag. Like it's a thing that like is happening so quickly and so fast and is an actual thing. Like that's the hardest thing I think for us to wrap our head around is I feel like I don't it believe two- it, Greg. I don't believe you. I don't believe I feel like it was real. two years ago that we sat down and I met mm-hmm. Patrick, the guy who was on the Patrick D's, who was the guy mm-hmm. from the FCF running it, who came on the show when we announced it and did all the stuff. But like to actually be here now where I'm wearing FCF merchandise, this shit is starting to ship and out. It's, it's, it's dope. Yeah, it's dope. And like, just in general, the shirts are cool. We're supposed to get those sometime this week, I think. But, but like, not only that, like I've designed seen, by one of us, right? Like designed by one of our, our people. This is unbelievable. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, Campfire Designs, of course, did uh, the Wild Aces logo, of course, that we're using. And again, if you haven't been fa- paying attention, the idea with the FCF is that everybody, you, the fans, when you go, when you go to FCF, dot io or kind of funny.com slash slash fcf you go in and you sign up and back a team and right now what that would have meant if you would have done earlier is you would have voted on the jersey would have voted on the logo you would have voted on the colors and shit like that now you're voting on league rules right now the thing going on that i still have to vote on is playoff uh, how the playoffs are going to work have you seen this andy Uh -uh. no i haven't i i I know that this just happened like yesterday i believe right yeah it's a playoff because i I voted on the other stuff i voted on the you know i voted for one foot in for a catch instead of two you know so the way we're doing it right is this very backyard uh football because of covid because of everything and how the idea of it's changed right so there's the four teams obviously for season one four the four teams will make the playoffs obviously to do it right but how playoff seating should work is up for vote right now. So you can go there, right? Right now it's classic style. One seed plays four, two seed plays three, right? Winners playing the championship. Then gauntlet, four seed plays three seed. Then winner plays two seed. And the winner plays the one seed in the championship. And then oh. pick your own adventure. One seed's fans choose their opponent. And the two remaining oh. teams play each other. And the winner's playing the championship. I'm going with that one. I'm, I'm, I'm signing up right I'm now. Voted, I'm, I'm voting voting pick your adventure right now, right? Exactly. That's winning right now with 50% of the vote. So... Right now, again, fan controlled. That's how they're picking this. We we did a vote already for if it should be one foot inbounds, two foot inbounds. But more importantly, when we get going, right, when we actually get to uh, drafting the team, when we actually get to the actual games, you're voting on that as well. So you're going to vote on who we draft. When the game's being played, you will use a Twitch extension or the .com because you watch it on Twitch to then vote on what play of three should be called. So we're actually doing this thing. And that's why our head coach over here, AJ, right, is called, he isn't listing himself as head coach. He's li- listing himself as head coordinator because he's training the team and doing the stuff and running the plays. But obviously, it's up to us to do all the different calls and stuff. And again, what I love about it is I've said before because I know so many kind of funny best friends and I totally understand don't care about football it's not your thing that's no big deal i think this is awesome because it's another reason for us to hang out to each, each other it's another reason for us like my old antler days to give shit to people on twitter in a fun way everybody's in on i don't know if quavo's in on it but the people were giving shit to her <laughs> on it and then it's another reason for us to hang out on the weekends right like the games are designed to have a 60 minute running clock like games are one hour long like it's it's meant to be something that you can have fun with and bounce and not have to do with it. It's like an hour to, we're going to co-stream every game, obviously, and fuck around and call plays and yell at stuff. I need, I've had some interview requests already for uh, Johnny Ace. I need to get him booked. I need to get the I Ace can, man I can hit him up with you on my time and see what's up. I will, yeah. If you get him back from Malta, if you get him back from Malta. How, how do we, um, how does people go about like voting for all these things? Do you sign up on this like join now and you get yeah, updates yeah, for if you, if you go right now to uh, kind of funny.com slash FCF or FCF.io, uh, when you get there, you have to like pledge allegiance to a team. So if you click on wild aces, you'll go there. You have to make an account like in that, because I think there's going to be message boards and stuff eventually I like that. But it's a whole thing of the more choices you make. And I don't know if it's happening anymore with season one. Again, COVID changed a lot of plans. As you know, Nick, you mentioned uh, it's all happening in Nevada, right? That mm-hmm. was that was many a plan ago when we were supposed to be going to Las Vegas every weekend to do the games in live with a live audience. Since then, now it's all happening in the bubble in Georgia. And so it's not like that at all, but I know your account's going to carry weight. It's you're going to gain XP. Not that you would, uh, so that the more choices you make and the more you play and participate, the more your vote would count for. I don't think that's happening in season one, but Man, I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm all in on zappers. This team looks no, awesome. No, 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 Nick, you're the face of this team. Literally. <laughs> Can you imagine? They're just like, why is the ace over in the Zappers box? <laughs> <laughs> they got the they got free Cheetos over here. They got free Cheetos like, over here. Like the ace oh, standing on the God. hideline, like on the sideline with the headset, like chewing gum. Like, oh, God. Andy, <laughs> I want, you know what I want? I want those, the, the shorts, the coach shorts that are always 
just way too tight and way too high. Yeah. One, like one inch too high. Yeah. Just one inch too high. And just like, dude, you did not even fit into those in high school and you're still wearing them. That's what I want right now. Hold on. This is great, man. This is so fun. And I can't believe all this stuff. Like this is just definitely Tim. If I can for a second, if we can just bring this down to reality. One of those ideas that you and I looked at each other, were like, no, there's no way this is happening. Right. We're going to, I have, I'm still there. I'm still there. It's happening and I still don't believe it. And that happens a lot with kind of funny, but this is one of those things where I'm like, this is the closest we'll Tim. ever be to talking to Quavo. Tim, the and sentence I'm happy was, that that might happen. The sentence was just uttered. This is a, by Greg. This is a great way for us to have fun on the weekend. Well, I don't know if Quavo will be in there on the fun. <laughs> Andy, go, go through me with these. What do I pick? So classic style, the gauntlet or pick your own adventure. You guys I, think pick pick your, adventure. I think pick your own adventure. Yeah. Okay. The other rules that happened last week, Nick, were okay. uh, or a couple weeks ago, were how do you want what do you want to know. be an official catch? So the NFL, if if a wide receiver needs to make a catch and stay in bounds, if you get two feet down on the field before you go out of bounds, it's a catch. In college, it's the one foot rule. You, you just need yeah, like one foot down. I cool. went with the one foot rule, of course. Like that's just more I, that fun. That has to have one. They have winners, but that has to have one. Yeah, it allows for for you know more crazy plays because you don't have to be. You could be a little bit more athletic with it. Um, yeah, you got to go one foot there. Now I. I don't want it to be shown, but I just, uh, well, I don't, not obviously. I just texted you all the actual look of what the set's going to look like, what the, the field's going to look like, oh, but don't show it to camera because this isn't announced yet. Because, and like, again, like, again, we've seen it go through many iterations since we got pitched this originally. Again, like I was talking about it when we initially talked to you, it was going to be a thing in Vegas. It was going to be going on for a while. Uh, like, the new way they're doing the studio, I think, is pretty fucking cool. Or that not studio, the field. I keep Damn it, I screwed up. I screwed up my voting, and now I can't vote any, anymore. It's okay. Yeah, There's I also fucked too. up. I, I closed Shit. it. I was like, I'll come back to I it. I did, too. And won't let me and come back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is horseshit. Uh, we, we, I, we didn't mean this to up. become a commercial for the FCF. No, I just, this, is, I mean, this is the thing that, like, I'm glad we're doing this because I – I've seen Greg dip in to some of these things and every once in a while he hits me up for like a question here and there or like seeing if we can get the A's for some press stuff. And Greg, I'm sorry, he, has, he wasn't made more available. It's okay. Uh, over the holiday break. But um, but it's cool to get this update and it's cool to see it going. And it's just wild to think that this, this is a reality. This and it's not bananas. only it's a reality, it's like imminent. Like it's going yeah. to be getting incredible. I think it's next week that training, uh, they're out of the bubble and they can actually do training camp. So it'll be even more ratcheted up, let yeah. alone the fact, like I want to get Austin, uh, you, uh, you were talking about Austin Eckler. I want to get Austin on the podcast. I think he'd be a great guest to come in and talk about being a football player. And then yeah, he's he's a, around those. he also he streams in his part time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel also, he's, if you haven't get been your checks, by the way. Sorry. You didn't get my or, text? I yeah. Didn't either. I didn't and, well, yeah. I think it's Andy yeah. fucking it up. Yeah, me of course neither. Got to so. be the Android yeah. person. I'm all sand. Oh yeah, mixer yeah. sand failure. You're right. Never, never, never. Sounds like um, a team. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'll just screen shot the. P- it's a PDF that I'm trying to Slack do. Slack it to us, dude. What are you doing? Well, I was, I, I'm on a fucking computer, dude. I'm telling you, it's not working. I'm not on have, my phone trying to Slack. Slack on thing, your dude. phone. I'm, I do, but I was trying to get you a PDF of the thing to the stuff. I mean, you know what, Kevin? I'm gonna DM it to everybody, but you know, you know, you've made your own bet. Okay, I'll DM it to you, dude. Don't worry. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. You've always been my closest friend. I got you, bro. Oh, that's true. I'm going to call him about that. And I do this and then paste. No, that didn't work. Hold on. I was told that um, it oh. sounds like we're just, it feels like we're just having a meeting now. And I love this. I'm just going like to talk about other, I'm just going to talk about other business stuff. Did you all get okay. the email about the standing desk promo? Yes. About getting, getting a standing desk? Well, I didn't get, I got an email from a standing desk company a while back saying, hey, hey do you want Andy, a standing you desk? you have oh, a standing desk. Uplift. No, but not here at home. Yeah, but I've offered it to take it to your house multiple times. Oh, I mean, we'll end up using it again at the new studio. I don't want to. Well, yeah, at which point, like, the computer. <laughs> I hate you so. Hey, it's pretty yeah. tight, Greg. Right? Yeah, don't yeah. show it, obviously, Kevin. But, like, no, don't show it to anybody. Or, you know what I mean. Uh, but, yeah, I think the stadium is going to be awesome when they reveal that. It's going to be cool. Exciting thing. stuff, man. I, yeah. I can't wait to see what this actually turns into. Yeah, that's the other thing too, because it's like, is it like, and one quick thing too that, like, again, it's, I know this sounds like a commercial, but obviously we actually don't ever talk about this. And the fact that it's right here, I think probably deserves to be talked about. The one thing, if you haven't been paying attention, Josh Makuga and Jeff Kanata host the FCF show every Thursday. (laughs) They're live right now on Twitch doing a show about the FCF. So heads up on that if you haven't seen Makuga, like, Everyone's involved. Everyone's being a part of it. It's pretty cool in different ways. Um, and yeah, I can't wait for it to actually uh, get going. 
Yeah, I brought it up here. That like when I went over their Twitter, that really yeah. caught me off <laughs> guard. I was like, "What the fuck is Rob McGugan? Yeah, why have we yeah, not yeah, talked yeah, about Rob that?" McGugan. Because, I mean, you God, know, we Jeff have a million Kanata. things going on. Great smile on Jeff Kanata. You know what I mean? Look oh. at him. Yeah, totally. yeah, but he totally. also looks like that one dude from the Backstreet Boys. He does. Joey Fatone? Yeah, right? I hate you all. Or what? Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, what's up? Kevin. From, from Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I was talking to you. What do you mean? Are you yeah. saying he looks like Kevin from he the Backstreet like Boys? He looks like Kevin from Backstreet Boys. He looks like one yeah. of them. I don't know. Joey Fatone felt right when he said it. That's the old one, right? From NSYNC. Oh. That's why Tim's mad at you. That's why there's clear anger. <laughs> he knew, Tim. He knew. Ladies really and gentlemen, <laughs> that's your kind of funny podcast for second one for the week. Thank you very much to our friend, WWE superstar Xavier Woods, a.k.a. the commish from Up, Up, Down, Down. Austin Creed. Everybody go over there. <laughs> what a tool bag. You know what I mean? I remember, like, of course, this is the kind of funny podcast each and every week. Four, sometimes five best friends gather around these microphones coming to bullshit about what's going on in their life. Sometimes it's a football team. Sometimes just hanging out, having a good time. Remember, the FCF is kicking off soon. I keep saying that. There's no kickoff. There's no kicking. It's, no, it's one of their things. Anyways, it's happening soon. Uh, you can, of course, go over to kindoffunny.com slash FCF and get registered. It's free. Even if you don't want to buy the merch, it's free to be there and participate with us and hang out with us on twitch and have a good time uh, remember this show isn't truly over you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny where we're doing a post show hanging out shooting the shit but until next time no it's been a pleasure to serve you <laughs>